So a couple of days ago I made this silly video and it did remarkably well. So a couple of guys were asking for a tutorial on how I did it. It's actually very simple and very handy. So with that in mind, I'm Kev Ryan and here we go. So here we have a basic scene for our simulation. We just have a camera and we have some collision geo, which is of course Suzanne from Blender. So I load her in as a Lembic. I set it so that it is unpacked when it's loaded and then subdivide. I use a transform node to move her up in the Y axis and a little bit along on the X axis because that's where I want my uh, wind tunnel to be. I want it to go from left to right. And then I'm also scaling her down slightly and using a little expression so she spins around. Cool. So after that, we're adding a little bit of color, some normals and a trail stop to compute our velocity. This is gonna be very important later on when we're doing our simulation. Speaking of which, let's throw in another geo node. We'll call this pyro, dive in. I'm gonna create a sphere, set it to be a polygon, give it some more frequency, scale it down and move it negatively on the X axis and a little bit up on the Y axis. Then we put in a copy and transform Move that up by say 0.4 and give us, let's say seven copies for now. Now we just need a pyro source. Initialize source smoke and then volume, rasterize attributes. And then the attribute we wanna rasterize for now is the density. We don't really need any temperature in this setup, but it's good to have it there in case you wanna try some different things out. Before we put in our pyro solver, let's bring in our collision geometry. So object merge and then Suzanne geo and output. Now we need to turn this into a collision volume. So we need to go VDB from polygons. Link that up. Change the name of this distance VDB to collision. And then as we said before, we have this trail stop computing our velocity. So we need to have that also as a separate uh, VDB. So we go here, click the plus sign, attribute point V, and we'll call that VDB name V as well. So now we can put down our pyro solver. Link this to here and this to here. And you'll see from the second input, it's looking for collision volumes, which is what we've created here. And in our pyro solver, we can start setting things up. So right now, straight away, lower the box of size and also copy parameter and make sure you make links by pasting relative references to your volume rasterize, your pyro source and also your VDB from polygons. That way your entire system is linked together. Then on our collision tab, collision type, let's go to SDF and volume velocity. And you can see here, it's already populated this field with collision and our velocity volume as being V. And then for sourcing, we have density. We don't need to bring in any temperature yet. We can absolutely get rid of the flame. And we don't have any velocity, so we'll just untick that as well. Then on our fields, we don't need any dissipation. We still don't need flame. Then on the shape tab is where we really sculpt this effect. So on shape, we can add some wind, get rid of some buoyancy, increase this. And then if you want, you can add some disturbance just to give it a little bit more character. And now if we press play, you'll see that we're more or less getting our effect as we expected. But it was looking a little tick, so let's lower the voxel size and try again. So as you can see here, we're getting some really nice turbulent effects behind Suzanne's head. And uh, we're also getting these sorts of ripply bands going on as the lower lines of smoke are pushing upwards and pushing downwards as well. And all that's causing this really is just the movement of that monkey head. But we have some issues still. We can see it's, there's a lot of stepping going on. Um, you know, and some of the smoke is just getting clipped off by Suzanne's head, which can be solved with more sub steps. But first, what I like to do is I like to place down another box and then I'm going to use this 
as a bound. So we go here, size y divided by 2, and then set this to 3, maybe 7, and then 3 as well. And then what I like to do is copy parameter here, and then on our bounds tab, paste this here, copy, and paste relative references here too. That way, our bound of our simulation is never going to get any bigger than this because sparse simulations will infinitely grow larger. And with a setup like this, with no dissipation, that could cause a lot of issues. Then all we need to do is go to our setup, add in a bunch more sub-steps. And then really all you're doing then is just lowering your voxel size to something like that. And then file cache, give it a cool name, and then hit save. Here's one I made earlier. Oh, wait, hang on. No, here's one I made earlier. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you make anything fun and silly, be sure to tag me at, at KevRyanCG on Twitter or Instagram. And yeah, make sure you wrap yourselves up when you're heading out. It's getting a bit chilly out there, yeah? Alright, sure mind yourselves then. Bye!